We are concerned not merely with the technical problem of securing and maintaining peace, but also with the important task of education and enlightenment. Hanging out with Grant again in Winnipeg. Grant, you called me up earlier today. Super excited. Yeah. You're like, Matt, demons at Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah, demons at Skinwalker. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got me interested in uh, yeah. Skinwalker demons for sure. Well, let's hear about it. What are you, what are you excited about? Okay, well, there was a couple things happening. First, it, it all has to do with this book called The Skinwalkers at the Pentagon book. The new it was one. written by Lekatsky Le and uh, Comb Callagher and George Knapp. And they're talking about all these events at Skinwalker Ranch. Now, I see events a little bit different, and people are always on this thing about there's these evil aliens, and I'm writing this chapter about evil aliens, and I'm looking at Calaris, and I'm looking at all these different things about what I think is going on. And last night, I'm listening to a podcast. So I spent a lot of time walking around, and I'm listening to podcasts. So I'm listening to, to um, uh, Julie Mossbridge last night, and this is when the light comes on. So Pushy? I'm, She's a uh, fellow at the Institute for uh, the um, IONS Institute. She's got a PhD. Um, Institute of Noetic Sciences, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, we got Desta off camera here again, producing the scenes. You don't get to see her, but there she is laughing away, smiling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we brought her in because she's an expert on, on. That's right. We worked on this stuff, and it's maybe not coincidence that Desta has exactly the kind of stuff that I want to bring into this discussion about what's actually going on at Skinwalker Ranch. Mm -hmm. So they've got it as this, you know. It's a 480-acre ranch. It's a threat to national security. We need money from the Senate Armed Services Committee and intelligence to fight off this threat and whatever. And I've always seen it completely different as to what's going on. So I'm I'm listening to Mossbridge last night, and she's talking about she's talking about um, uh, controlled precognition. So she's doing these scientific experiments. I don't really understand too much of what she's doing. And so she says, one of the alarming and most disconcerting things about controlled precognition is that even if you don't blend, merge, or morph with the element in a target, so she's looking at targets, like remote viewing targets and stuff like that, even if you don't merge with the target, uh, they can feel uh, like they stick to you after you're done if you don't properly disconnect. Uh, this is not a big deal. But it can be irritating, so you really want to avoid this. It is critical to disconnect from the target. Hmm. And so as soon as I heard that, it's like the light came on. It was like, this is the whole shadow thing, the whole thing about shadow figures, which is or the vast majority, the hitchhiker, yeah. yeah, the shadow figure and the, all this stuff, that these things are following people home. And they say, there are these bad things happening, Skinwalker. Look at these guys, this stuff followed them home and stuff like that. And then it was the whole idea was that... You, you've got to close the session. You've got to sort of turn this thing off and you've, you've got to shut it down. And it sort of made sense in terms of um, stuff that other people have said. So, so the guy who owns Skinwalker Ranch now is this Brandon Fugel. And one of the things I've been bringing up on Facebook and stuff like this recently is he talks about this as well, is that this idea of you manifest, or as Seth says, I'll, I'll read what Seth says. Uh, Seth says you create your own reality. This is the beginning of the New Age movement. Who, Jeez, Seth? Seth was a major channeler who I watched in the early years and then I sort of gave it up and then I read her again um, maybe a couple months ago and I went, whoa, this is really high level stuff. So Seth says, you create your own reality, there is no other rule. This idea that whatever's happening around you, you're part of it, you're creating this reality. Uh, and then uh, realize that your physical, um, let me put my glasses on here, Realize that your physical experience and environment uh, is the materialization of your beliefs. And I talked a bit about this in, di in different things. Um, you get what you concentrate on, there is no other rule. And so it was this idea that when, when these guys go on there, they're part of the experience. And what George Knapp had said was the, the, the problem they had was when the guys with the guns came on the ranch. And at one point he said those who had the worst experience uh, they were the most aggressive to the phenomena, had the worst experiences. So it's this, this whole idea of reflection. So what does Brandon Fugel say? Brandon Fugel owns the ranch right now. So this is what Brandon Fugel says. We have to be vigilant 
and I think enter the ranch with a degree of reverence and humility. With that in mind, we encourage everybody who enters to prepare themselves spiritually or to armor themselves spiritually or psychologically. We offer a prayer before entering either the airspace or even on the ground in order to protect the team and hopefully set the right tone. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying the same thing. When you go on there, you're part of what's going to happen here. And if you go in with the wrong attitude, you're going to have, have some problems. Right, so if I was a military guy, you know, all gung-ho and negative, go on there with guns thinking I'm really tough, yeah. obviously you're going to have a bad experience, yeah. right? Or, or if you even look at the, 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 the whole thing with the Rendlesham Forest, one of the things with the Rendlesham Forest is that the gun was pulled. One guy was injured, and the, one of the rumored stories was a gun was pulled in there. And then the other thing that I latched on to this as well is an interview done by Diane Pasolka. And Diane Pasolka is this religion professor who wrote this book, and she's been at the Vatican, has been working with American she's Cosmic. Inside, she's been inside this sort of invisible college. And she talks about the fact that she gets taken to what's called the gifting field by Tyler D. And she's blindfolded, and Gary Nolan is there with him. And they go on there, and she says, as soon as they get there, and she's a religion philosophy uh, head of the department at North Carolina State University, or she used to be. And she says, we get there, and Tyler D. starts praying. And this is a government site with a fence and a lock on the fence and all this kind of stuff. He starts praying before we go on there, and she says, so I go along with this. I guess she's sort of shocked that this guy's praying. And then he builds an altar. He goes onto the site and he builds an altar, she says, and he builds an altar every time he goes there. And there's all these other altars that all these government people that are going on there are building altars. And this is the same idea that whatever you, you bring to the thing, that there's no separation. So in the download experience I had, it said, is the, is the world all one thing? Is it all connected? Or is there separation? Are you and I separate? And when you get into the high-dose psychedelics with the ayahuasca and stuff, people will say, I suddenly realized everything was alive, connected. Everything was live, conscious, and connected. That everything's connected. So it's his attitude. So when I looked at this whole thing with the Skinwalker Ranch thing, I looked at these military guys going on there and the fact that they had the bad experiences. And yet when you get George Knapp going on there, George Knapp said, oh, that was great. I mean, so I, 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 thought I got invigorated when I went on the ranch. So why do some people see it and some people don't? Then the next event happened, and you've got the, the record here, and this is, ties into this, is the guy that the book starts, the Skinwalker book starts, with, um, um, the, they write the first original Skinwalker book, Col Colm Callagher and George Knapp wrote the first Skinwalker. Book. And this book goes around the Middle East, and all these military guys are reading it. And my interpretation of this is they look at this and they go, holy man, this be, can you imagine this technology? We should go get this technology. So they, they decide, uh, Lekatsky, uh, who's a... a a doctor, a big rocket guy at the Defense Intelligence Agency, gets a meeting and he gets through through Bigelow and through Reed and he gets to go on to the ranch and he and he's going to look at the ranch and the whole thing that is played out was UFOs and it's not. He's going on there to look at this technology. Can we figure out how this technology works? We can get all this kind of stuff and do this kind of stuff to our enemies and whatever. And he goes on and he, according to him, he sees this symbol. So this is um, this, this, the symbol from this Oldfield record, produced in 19... Tubular, yeah, tubular bells. Tubular bells. And he, and he tells George Knapp that this is the closest thing to what he saw. So he gets on the ranch, and they're, having the, they're sitting around this table, and this thing appears in behind the people. And Lekatsky's looking at this, this symbol, tubular bells, floating there. And he's, he, he, it's there, and he sort of looks away, and he looks back, and it's still there. And it's there for about 30 seconds, and it just sort of disappears. So the first impression I had was, oh, they're, they're interacting. They, they were like, by the time you finally got here, we, you know, we're waiting for you to come. And then when somebody posted that this is, this, this, this is the music that was used for the exorcist. <laughs> and then I go, oh, that's what's going on. So the whole idea is like Kasky goes on there, and, and when he goes back to the Pentagon, he gets all these guys who are saying, this is demons, man. This is demons. You're dealing with demons. And the whole thing that makes sense is like if you go back, Lekaski goes back to the Pentagon. And he says, "Oh, I saw this symbol floating around here at Skinwalker Ranch. We should spend some money." And they, and they find out that this is a symbol for the Exorcist. What, what the hell do you think these Christian fundamentalists would say? He's dealing with demons. And and I made the joke when I had the first pa uh, panel on the Skinwalker Ranch. I said, "If you took out the whole thing with the Nimitz out of the book, it does look like demons. They make it like demons. There's these orbs, and these people are being attacked, and and all this kind of stuff." And um, so the, the, the whole thing was, what's, what's really going on at Skinwalker Ranch? And then um, I, I, I got into this whole thing where I started looking at this, this whole thing of uh, how does reality actually work? And my impression, maybe right or wrong, 
is that we are part of what we see. So I want to read a thing that, that Bashar said. So I, I look up, I posted this um, uh, Mossbridge quote, and then um, somebody posted, Walter posted this, um, shoot, I'm not going to find it here. You were talking about the reflective nature of the phenomena. Yeah, that, that the, 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 oh no, of course it's not going to come up here, previous replies. So he posts this thing from Bashar, and here's, here's what Bashar says, this thing about attachments, that you, you are part of what you're seeing. So you're attached, so if you're vibrating at a certain level, you're going to pick up things at that level. That's how you do it. Like in psychedelics, you'll move to a different vibration. So it has this thing with any detachment. So here's what Bashar says. And Bashar is this Chandler guy who everybody watches. And on this one, he seems to be right on the mark. He says, uh, he's asked, uh, what about negative entity attachments? He said, no such thing. Uh, no, uh, no entity attachments. What you're describing is an old-fashioned, outdated, medieval way of saying that for some reason you have a belief that you are holding onto that allows you to match the vibration of another being that might be operating on a negative vibratory level. But the idea that is, but but. But the idea is that it will feel like an attachment because that's the way the negative things have to be translated in order for you to feel like you have no power to change it. Hmm. But you do. Just stop matching the frequency and you will no longer feel the attachment. And this is this idea that I was given in the download is that you are part of what, you, of what you're seeing. So when Lekatsky goes on there, he's at a negative vibration level and he picks this up. Whereas if you get people who come on Skinwalker Ranch, like George Knapp and uh, Davis and guys like this, they don't have any experiences. John Alexander doesn't have any experiences. It's when you, and when you have the military guys coming and they're vibrating at a certain level. And then there's this whole idea uh, that Mossbridge talks about is that when you go on there and then you get an encounter with these beings or whatever it is, whatever this phenomena is, then you, if you don't close the door, if you don't shut the thing down, you take it home with you. Mm -hmm. And I knew, and that's why I wanted to bring Desta in, is that this is well known in the paranormal field. In fact, Melinda Leslie posted tonight, uh, related to this, she said, I've done like hundreds of encounters, uh, hundreds of things, I've never taken anything home ever. And then Chase Kletsky comes on, and she says, I've done hundreds of, of things as well, I've never taken anything home. And it's this idea that they, they opened this, this channel thing up, they picked up this thing, then they took it back with them, and then blamed the evil aliens, or whatever they want to blame it for, but unless you shut it down, and Desta, you can talk about this, that, that in any paranormal protocol, that when you're trained, and you're trained in a lot of stuff, that you've got to shut this thing down, that you are interacting, that this stuff is all for real. It's the, the, if you go to Skinwalker Ranch, they'll come in and say, ah, this is all nonsense, we've got guns, we'll figure this thing out. And you don't realize that there's this other level of reality that is, that is coming out and manifesting itself based on your vibration, and that you're in trouble if you if you don't do pro protocols. So talk about your protocols in terms of the stuff that you've done and the fact that everybody should know this. And when I and I'll just mention one more thing. When I did I did a, a presentation for Paula Harris, and on there, I always say the biggest best job I ever had when I was at, uh, at the university was to realize that people who got PhDs in chemistry don't get them to fix your car. I mean, or physics. That er, that if you're a chem, if you're a chemistry hammer, everything looks like a chemistry nail. That that everybody has this sort of their own little uh, world, and that because because you don't understand how how this thing works, and so when I looked at when I did Paula's thing, I actually listed from the book who was who they brought in to do the OSAP, which is the twenty two million dollars. Most of it was spent not on UFOs for for ATIP. It was spent on OSAP. It was spent on the ranch trying to figure out how this paranormal phenomena was working. And so I listed them off. And there was chemists and there was physicists and there was uh, guys that were experts on, on tracking devices and stuff like this. There was no parapsychologists, no psychologists, no religious people. There was nothing. There was nobody had a clue of what this is about. So you're going in unprepared, thinking that you, because you've got a chemistry degree, you can figure this thing out or whatever. They go in skeptical, they're bringing in bad attitudes, they're bringing in guns and stuff like that. And so explain the fact that this is a, a, a thing that goes across all paranormal phenomena. That Question this, first, do you agree with the Bashar quote? Do you think that there's something that could actually follow you, like a hitchhiker? Or do you think that's just your own reflection of that? What do you think about that? I got a message once when we were in Reno, actually, 
and I had a dream of something sitting on my chest. I used to always have the hypnagogic and hypnopompic experiences, but I never had like the old hag or anything sit on yeah. my chest. But we were in this, that really weird Reno hotel with these huge gigantic rooms. And anyways, I had something one night where it was a black thing sitting on my chest, you know, trying to strangle me. And I did a channeling immediately after and asked what it was. And it actually said almost, I'll have to find it, but it almost said that quote, it's in one of my books, but it said, um, it said basically that, that if you resonate the frequency of love, that the, the negative thing of the black thing sitting on your chest trying, trying to strangle you or whatever has, can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. So it just kept saying like, basically just ignore it. It's some, it's something that is out there, but it'll never hurt you again. Just remember to stay in the love vibration. And then it has nothing to do with you. So I would say that, yeah. So that, well, actually, I forgot about that situation, but yeah, that reminded now you, me of it. Now you're reminding me of something <laughs> almost as important. Because I did all the protocols, and the one I was trying to do the most was lucid dreaming. And Stephen LeBurge, who ran the dream lab at Stanford University, where they had the people that would go into the lucid dream, and they would give this signal they were in the dream, and, and all this kind of stuff. And he says quite clearly that when you're in a lucid dream, everything is very plastic. And he said, so if you, you have two options. If an, an evil alien or a demon starts coming after you in a dream, you have two options. Run away, and, and, and you'll never get over it. Or you go and you give it a big hug and a kiss, and it will turn into a positive being and give you a positive message. And that's this reflective nature, is that because you see it, you think, oh, it, it's, it's real. And we don't realize this plasticity, that we are part of what we're seeing. And that in the more plastic and the more you get in the lucid dream, you can control it more. We don't think we have any control that we're in this. And so it's that idea of the love vibration, that whatever vibration you're in, and this idea of Mission Rama, which I bring up a hundred times, is you can talk about all the evil aliens you want and all the evil demons you want, but when you get to Mission Rama, where you go and sit on the side of a mountain and you're oming and meditating and doing all this stuff, there are no greys, there are no reptilians, there are no mantids, there are no evil blue orbs, there's nothing, it's all angelic and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's the idea that whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. So to go to this thing about... All and the, praying or, for peace, I'll just add, that's the yeah. main thing about those things, is you're praying for world peace. So it's pretty hard to get a... <laughs> demons show up and you got a bunch of people oming, you know, and praying for peace. But, um, yeah, the protocols, I mean, in, in most energy healing, at least, or any of those kind of um, modalities that I've ever done, um, we're always, every single thing, no matter what, you have to make sure you're protected before you start. So whether you're smudging or envisioning something or holding a crystal or doing a meditation where you're, you know, holding love in your heart kind of thing, you're always doing something positive at the beginning and then you're setting some kind of intention. So um, all of these things are, you would say, rituals back in the old days of the, the old magic days or whatever, but you're always doing a ritual and it's a protection ritual first and a closing ritual at the end. So you always want to make sure... Like my grandma, so this must have been a thing from the, you know, I don't know, the 20s or 30s or 40s or something used to, what they used to always do is loud noises they thought would scare away the spirit. So I learned from my grandma at the end of whatever. So I did it at the end of Reiki because I took Reiki when I was like 18 or something. So I don't think they taught me this, but my grandma had taught me this. So I always did is clap loud three times when you're finishing something so my grandma used to do seances and stuff so you clap loud three times and it kind of disperses it's the same thing that's how you close it you get rid of all the spirits so you scare them away by clapping loud three times so I did that I used to have to do that at the end of my Reiki things because I believed it because I was raised by thinking yeah. that that was the way to do it but for dowsing you have to um or my teachers always taught me at the end to close a dowsing session especially if you're dealing with entities attachments or anything if you're dealing with something that has to do with entities you force the pendulum at the end to say end right so yeah. you you have your own thing mine is like a horizontal line so I force it to say end because that is again my intention my energy going into saying that this is now closed I'm ending this so anything that's supposed to be around us you know has to leave basically but same with when you do regressions and hypnosis of course when you bring them out you're I inputting the um the like um, intention into their subconscious when you're bringing them out very carefully is that remember 
when you wake up, every being that we talk to, all your past lives, those people stay in that time, and you are now Grant Cameron, 2021, in Dusta's house. You have to, you, you're very carefully disattached, like you're unattaching or whatever it's called. Yeah. You're like splitting the thing off. You're saying, Grant, remember when you wake up, you're Grant. You're not the guy who we just regressed. You're not your past life. You're not this thing. We're, we're ending the session by making sure your psyche stays in your head and you're dis, you know, yeah. dis. I don't know. You're unattaching from the from the other um, past lives that you just experienced or whatever. And in channeling is is I thought always the most important one because you're literally in contact with these beings, and they always told me that they came in through my crown chakra. They always said that. So at the beginning, whatever my protection prayer kind of thing is at the beginning, and I always smudge and do a meditation. That's the thing to get in a positive vibration. But then. You know, I was, you know, learnt or knew, or I don't know, I don't even know if anyone told me this, but I always, you know, ask the guides to make sure that they're the gatekeepers and they make sure that there is no negative beings that come in and that I'm only communicating with something at least as, at least at my vibration or higher, the whole entire thing. And then I say, and when we're done, make sure you close me out. And that means closing the crown chakra because they mm-hmm. open the crown chakra. That's how they, you know, come and communicate because they're in line and with your similar protocols in, in almost every aspect of the occult and channeling and in the, the guys at Skinwalker Ranch too, right? They have all these... Well, now they do. But let, <clears throat> let, me, let me bring in the, the, these guys that came in. So now we're talking about Brandon Fugel realizes because he's got a Mormon background, this religious stuff, and he may have, as you said, he may have talked to these guys, mm-hmm. brought in some psychic people. And what Destin and I were listening to earlier today with um, Ryan Patrick Burns, he was talking about these protocols that they employ too. And yeah. guys staying at his B and B and and psychics that they may employ and yeah, but but that's I think that's a recent development in the two thousand eight two thousand nine when the DIA guys were on there, they didn't have these protocols and that's what my whole point this thing is, is that these guys came on and figured we're in charge here we've got these guns or whatever and like I'll, I'll read what Corbell says during the Defense Intelligence Agency investigation there were some badass military individuals who were put on the property with night vision to scout out and determine the national security threat of the phenomena. They were they encountered something. They encountered something that induced so much fear that I don't think their lives have ever been the same again. This is what George Knapp says. The DIA had operations on the property Skinwalker at different times in 2008-2009. It was explained to me by multiple per- peop- uh, per- persons involved that there were three of these badass operatives, employees, who had seen a lot of time in combat who had done a lot of perilous ops for the U.S. government. They encountered something on the ranch that made it very clear they were not welcome, and they froze, literally. They were frozen, and they left, and it followed them. <laughs> so they come on, and they don't, they don't have this protocol. They don't know what, what's going on, or they're playing a game that they, they, they know what's going on, but they're pretending they don't. But it appears to me that they just went on there with bad attitudes and they picked up a vibration, they had a very low vibration and they picked up this very low thing that basically says, I mean, demons, you know, we're, we're, we're demons, and then they take it back and they still probably haven't figured this thing out, but now it seems that Brandon Fugel and stuff at least know this, or Diane Pasolka, when you hear her doing this interview, and she's not talking about, you know, disengaging or closing the session like Mossbridge says, you, when she says you, you, um, de-link or something like de-merge. that, de-merge, de-merge, yeah. de-merge Right, draw a line and say session is over, and that's got nothing. That's mm. that's you know sort of per, um, you know precognition. It's got nothing to do with ghosts and stuff, and it's yet that same protocol. Mm. 